Hello everyone, Foundation Network here, and I'm finally getting around to talking about the third and final book in the Halo Forerunner series, Halo Silentium. There we go. Ah. Hi! So, this... It didn't really take me a while to read, that's why it took me so long to make this video to read it. It's just like two or three weeks ago I got to the very last chapter, it's like two page chapter, and kind of put it down, which I do with a lot of books. I mentioned this in my last video, especially ones I like, just because I don't really want them to end. Anyway, enough of my incoherent babbling about my reading style. On to the book. I must say, this was an excellent, excellent story, and well written, it kind of made up for uh, Primordium, which I really did not like, I just didn't like how it was written, and that was the big part, and kind of just how it moved forward, I was not a big fan of. But this kind of fixed it, this is a lot more like uh, Halo Cryptum, the first book in the series. Some, one of the things I really liked about it was actually just the perspective. It was kind of, kind of a first person omniscient, if you will. So, it was first person, but each chapter explored a different character from their point of view. And I found it really interesting. I'm not usually a fan of the first person, first person, gee, first person, gee, burst. I'm not usually a fan of the first person style. I usually like uh, third person omniscient because it just looks at all the characters. Well, first person, f first person <laughs> just looks at the one character. Gee, what's wrong with me? But this kind of took the best of both worlds because you could look at all the characters like third person omniscient, but you could look really deep into a single character, like first person. There we go. Um, one of my favorite parts of the story was the librarian when she went to that world with all the ancient forerunners, and uh, they just learned so much about the history and there's that massive fleet in the solar system and there's just the remaining forerunners on the planet and what they had to do like turn some of their friends and fa uh, like other forerunners into animal into game animals so they would be able to have food to eat and like it was pretty much a lifeless planet when they got there, but everything on it now, the animals, the plants and everything, were all like four hundred things that they put there so they were able to survive. That was really neat. Um just showing how the war ended I liked. Uh one thing I think could have been could have been done better is not really the Greg Bear's fault, uh, story's fault, probably 343's fault. I think it would have been better to have been released before Halo 4 because for those of you who read uh, Cryptum and Primordium, I guess the Didact wasn't in Primordium, but in Cryptum, he was like noble and he was a good guy. And then we get to Halo 4 and he's suddenly the villain and he wants to convert all humans into uh, Prometheans. Which didn't really make any sense. But then it finally explains in this is because he was sent into exile inside the burn, which is. Uh, the area of the galaxy controlled 
by the flood. I kind of sent him nuts, and he thought he had to have a better way to fight the flood, which was to use humans as Prometheans. So I'm glad I explained that, but if it ex if we had known that before Halo 4 came out, it would have made Halo 4's story a lot better and make a lot more sense, which is one of the big problems with Halo 4 in the first place. Like, well, it had a really in-depth story, but it was only for people who had read some of the books, including Karen Travis's book with Infinity Air and everything. So that was my biggest problem with it, was just simply, it could have come out earlier. Um, yeah, but a great detail into the end of the Forerunner War. Uh, how things work in Halo 4 and why things are there today. Uh, the Promethean, like, talked quite a bit about Promethean things. Uh, the Fire of the Halos, how there were two arcs that really, that, that was interesting. Like, there's the greater arc in the galaxy, and then there's the lesser arc, which is the one we see in Halo 3. Where the librarian goes. And I just found that uh, it kind of explains not just Halo 4, but goes back into Halo 3 and everything too. Um, oh, how to explain the origins of the Flood that the precursors went to war, or the I guess technically the Forerunners went to war with the Precursors, and despite how powerful the Precursors were, they lost because of the mantle and didn't want to fight back. So they kind of made this in, into the powder that's talked about in Book 1 in Cryptum, that the humans, when they were, had their galaxy galactic empire the were with the uh, sanchayam the he, prophets we see in Halo 2 and 3 and like lots of halo story i guess the they're allied together and they as pets they found this powder they think well it's some kind of organic powder but we think it's basically inert, and when we feed to our little pets here, they become a lot nicer, but then a few hundred years later, um, the pets start going these uh, extra limbs and mutating, they start eating each other, and this whole infection spread, and it's starting to spread into humans, and then after a while, the flood, as we know it, was born so born and how the precursors who made themselves into that kind of powdered state they're doing it to kind of to try to come back at a later time but eventually the power came be nerd or whatever and they weren't able to do that so they said well the Forerunners are not worthy of the mantle. Humanity is worthy of the mantle. So we are going to use this powder to create the flood and destroy the Forerunners, which is what they did. So yeah, I think it's a really good book. Oopsie doopsie, I forgot to say spoilers, didn't I? But anyway, check it out if you like. And I will see you next time. Actually, rare I put out two videos today, so... Lucky you, the next one is going to be about an awesome feature I learned about today on the Xbox One, so look forward to that. Bye bye.